Hey everybody, Jordan here coming to you live from Las Vegas. As you can see, that's not a green screen behind me. That is the real deal. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk to you for the next um, few minutes, and then I'm going to uh, very briefly give you a summary with some visuals of what I go over tonight. But this is hopefully going to help to set you up for the next year from a, from a standpoint of your dreams, your mindset, and the actual business building. So if you're like me, uh, you've had feelings of nervousness mixed in with feelings of excitement. This is like an every year thing because it's out of our comfort zone. And we hope each time that the clock turns over to a new year that we can, you know, kind of like land on something that's going to help set up the next year. So it's normal to feel, feel those feelings of like nervousness mixed in with feelings of excitement of a new year. We put pressure on ourselves. I put pressure on myself. I know you probably put pressure on yourself to do better, to be better, to live better. And that falls outside our comfort zone. So it's uncomfortable, right? It's, it falls outside our comfort zone to be better or do better or live better. It's outside of that. So it's uncomfortable. And a lot of years, uh, even this one, I'm not really sure what direction the new year will go and what I want to create in its path, uh, I'm, although I'm getting clearer on it. But a lot of times, even as the first approaches, I'm not really sure what direction I want to create or what or even like, do I have any clear idea of what direction I want to go? Sometimes we get torn between just letting things ride and then or or taking a bold new mo move. So after that health scare a few weeks ago, I feel like I'm entering into a new year, this new year from a place of confidence and at least physically, and it feels really good. My stress levels are significantly reduced uh, and, and what could have been really catastrophic turned out to be a breakthrough for me. Um, I'm grateful that I got sick. Uh, I ended up losing 33 pounds. I feel more energetic. It was easy for me to get the shovel out and shovel mountains of deep snow out from underneath my truck, which I could not have done two months ago because of my knees and my back and my weight. I feel healthier. I feel lighter on my feet. And I turned 65 in March. And I'm feeling really, really good because I took control of something that really needed attention that I did not know needed attention until I had that health scare. So 20... Um, 2022 was a year of transformation for me, which was exciting and also kind of scary in some ways. I did some things and we talked about those week after week. I learned to let go of some of my past beliefs about the way things are and learn to embrace new paradigms. And I still find myself stuck from time to time on where I need, like, like where I need to kind of ask myself, what do I need to let go of? Or what am I clinging on to that is not allowing me to grow to the next level or not allowing me to reach new levels of enlightenment and growth. So I asked myself the questions like, what's working and what's missing? What do I need to release? What do I need to let go of? So I'm throwing out a lot of ideas here and I wanna to talk to you about things that might be stopping you uh, in 2022 or 2021 or 2020 so that they don't stop you in 2023. So, so let's start with this. First thing I want you to do is just kind of breathe in 2023 as a new beginning. Just breathe in 2023 as a new beginning. Wherever you are, it's a new start. Let go of the constraints of the past. Whatever you think that's holding you back, let go of it. Release it. Even if you're not really sure what it is, free yourself of it. Fear is not a productive feeling. It's limiting and it keeps you from taking action and even trying things. Procrastination is a growth killer. What would happen if you just did this one thing in the face of procrastination, in the face of not doing something, take action? What if you did just that one thing? It's been said that the one thing that's the greatest determining factor in success is showing up, show up to play show up to learn, show up to work, show up to meet new people, show up if you're feeling fear, show up if you're procrastinating. Just showing up in the light of all these things that keep us from stepping into our future. And then there's the distractions. And I almost see like there's two different types of distractions. There's the first type, and by the way, if you're, if you're getting things from this, if you wanna drop them in the comments so that others can 
you know, see what you're getting that might help them. Um, there, are, you know, I see that there's two different types of distractions. The first type is distractions that are really urgent and important. Like, you know, your daughter breaks her leg, your, your young daughter or granddaughter breaks her leg. That's urgent and it's important. It has to be taken care of and it takes priority over everything else. Um, or you have a job and you get fired. That's urgent and important. It takes priority over everything else. But these are distractions. Like, And then there's things we create and make up or identify that aren't really urgent and important, but we make them urgent and important to avoid doing the work we don't want to do or we're afraid to do. So like, for example, some big story hits the news cycle and all of a sudden it becomes urgent and important and it's not really. We just use it as an excuse to not do what we're afraid to do or what we, what we, we really need to do. So both types of these distractions are equal and both are real. But everyone has distractions and everyone creates distraction. I do it. It's easy to fill our days with distractions. We'll even sometimes do something like, you know, put ourselves into a situation that causes us to not be able to do the things we're afraid to do. It's so easy to fill our days with distractions that keep us from doing the work that can make our dreams come true. And so being aware of it, being aware that, ah, this is a distraction that I made up and I just need to take action in the direction of my dreams and not give my priority to something that is keeping me from having my dreams. So we've talked about a few things here that can stand in the way of personal and business growth. And these are the enemies that must be kept at bay. And if they start to infiltrate you and um, you have to have the power to release them so that they don't own you. Fear, procrastination, and distractions. They're real when we're feeling them, but they don't need to control you. Fear, procrastination, and distractions. If you want to get to your dream, you've got to be able to put these three things at bay. And part of that is just being aware that they're real. So you might have seen this on Facebook. I thought this was really amusing and really interesting. Um, <clears throat> Barbara Walters, legendary journalist, and uh, she was asked how she got so many coveted interviews. Part of her success, she said, is doing one simple thing that anyone can do. And she said that is, she writes notes. She wrote notes. Not just thank you notes after her interviews, which she did, but also to noteworthy people in the news. If she saw something in Variety magazine that an actor or an actress was chosen for an upcoming role, she sent them a note congratulating them on being chosen, telling them they would be fabulous in the role and wishing them good luck at the box office. So when the movie came out, in the sea of journalists out there, who do you think got the call for the interview? Barbara Walters. Yeah, so send notes and cards because, you know, as Barbara Walters says, it's never just a card. So we're going to focus on three things tonight, not necessarily in this order. I'm going to be all over the map, but these are the three things we're focusing on. Number one, your dreams. Number two, your mindset. And number three, your business building. But let's just say that you just don't feel like you have it in you to set big goals for this year. I get that. I've been there. I've had years like that where I just don't have it in me to set a big goal. You don't have it in you to bust through barriers and blow things through the roof this year. I get that. Maybe you have things going on in your life that are real, important, urgent distractions. So let's start here instead. Number one, I'm just going to give you two things you can do. If, you're not, if you don't have it in you to set big goals this year, if you don't have it in you to bust through barriers, if you don't have it in you to blow things through the roof, start here instead. Two things. Number one, let go. Just release. Let go of the expectations of how you're supposed to be. And number two, what do you think it is? Act on promptings, act on promptings. You know what? I don't know if I ever hit the record button, did I? I guess I did, that's good. All right, let go, release, and number two, act on promptings. So your new year's resolution might look like this. Send three heartfelt prompting cards per day, no matter what and then let go and release all the expectations. For some of you, that feels right, and that's where you need to go in the new year. 
But for some of you, you've got big ambitions, you've got big dreams, and you want to really create a breakthrough for yourself. I want to ask you a question. What is it that you would regret not being able to do if you could never, ever do it again? What is it that you would regret not being able to do if you could never, ever do it again? For example, let's say you've never taken a trip to Europe in your life. And one day, the opportunity for you to go to Europe was taken away from you. and You've never gone. You can never, ever take that trip. Would you regret having never gone? Think about what those things are that you would regret having never done if the opportunity to do them was taken away and make a list of a few of those things, maybe three. Three things that you would regret if the opportunity to do it in the future were taken away. And I want, you to, I want to encourage you to put those things on your list of things to do or at least schedule them to do them this year. You, 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 may, not, you may not be able to do them this year or maybe you will be able to do them this year, Start there, put them on your calendar because one day will come that you'll never be able to do them. And maybe this becomes your thing this year for 2023. Like those things that you would regret never being able to do if they were taken away from you. So let's talk for a few minutes about business building. In all of my years in network marketing, I've discovered some constraints that don't, I'm sorry, not constraints. I've discovered some constants that never seem to change. Number one, for every 30 people personally sponsored, 10 will do nothing, 10 will do a little, 10 will do a little more than a little, and one will do something worth talking about. So let's start there. What would it take for you to sponsor 30 over the next year? That, that's a sliver over two per month. What would it take for you to sponsor 30? The second thing is, would it be worth working a consistent 10 hours a week to achieve two to $3,000 per month in residual income over the next couple of years? Would it be worth doing this for four years or five years for a $10,000 a month residual check? There's no guarantees as to what you're gonna make, but if you were to sponsor over the next, say, four years, two people a month, how many would that be? That would be 24 people per year, 48 people in two years, 50, 60 people in three years, 72 people in four years. I think I got that right. I did that math in my head. That would be two cycles of 30, at least 30, which means you might have two or even three big builders in your organization. And those numbers, I've never seen anybody be able to really change those numbers. But you've got to get your new people engaged by putting them into the system, getting them on Prompting Pro, getting them in on our weekly trainings, our weekly corporate updates. So I have some dreams and goals for the new year, and I'm going to share a few of them with you. And then I'm going to go and do a really quick summary with visuals of everything we just went over tonight. And as I'm going through it, if there's some things that really grab you or, or you know, move you in some way, go ahead and put them in the comments. So I'll share a few of mine. I've just got a few written down. Number one, I want to make Beach Money Cigars Playa de Nero known as a lifestyle brand of cigars. And I want to start with a thousand cigars per month. I, I want to sell a million cigars per year, but for now, I'm going to say a thousand cigars per month. It's a lifestyle. It's not just a cigar. Number two, I want to educate the world on the value of promptings. That's number two. Number three, I want to manifest three jaw-dropping miracles. I want to manifest three jaw-dropping miracles in 2023. Number four, I want to sponsor 30 online marketing coaches as partners, joint venture partners. Number five, I want to build an agency team for my Beach Money brand. What does that mean? I want to have people that can help me do what I'm not really good at. And that's building out. Like, so for example, in my early years, before I had money, one of the things that I wanted to do is contract out somebody to clean my place instead of me always having to clean it. Somebody that I could contract out to do my simple bookkeeping. Somebody that I could contract out to um, do yard work when I had 
uh, a rental in Tempe, Arizona, those kinds of things, right? So that was back then. Today, I'm looking at my Beach Money brand, and it could be so much more. And that can help to, that's my brand, and that can help to attract new people. But I need to build that out. And so that's one of the things that I'm looking at is partnering with people. You know, Fiverr is a perfect example of where you can find people that for almost nothing will do work for you. Um, and, uh, you know, for, for $5 or $10, they'll do a project for you. Some of these things are, it's pretty incredible. So number six is bring my helicopter flying back into the forefront. I found myself flying about every 45 days. I want to fly at least a couple times a month. So those are my, those are six things just come to mind that I want to create in 2023. I don't want to get too many on the list because then it gets a little bit overwhelming, but this is this list right here. I can handle one of my top priorities is to educate the world on the value of promptings and really shift my focus a bit from uh, just recruiting affiliates to finding people that resonate with the philosophy of promptings. And I'm going to do that in the realm of the online business coaches, because I think that in the business coach community, there are people that have systems and skills and, and communities that are already in place, much like BNI was already in place. So when I aligned myself with BNI and made friendships in that community, it opened up the whole community to me. That's what I want to do with the online marketing coaches, the online business coaches that are out there. And any one of you could do the same thing. You could say, I want to, I want to network in the hairstyling community because I think hairstylists would be perfect prospects or promptings. I don't know, but pick it, pick one. So, all right, with that, kind of all over the map tonight, I know, but hopefully you got some ideas and some thoughts from that. I am going to share my screen with you and give you a very rapid fire review of what we talked about tonight. So welcome 2023. Try and breathe in 2023 as a new beginning. Ask yourself what's working. What's working for you right now, personally and business-wise? What's missing? Be clear on that. And finally, what do you need to release? What do you need to let go of? to take you with momentum into 2023? Those are the three questions you want to compliment. Here's some things that might stop you. Fear. It's not a productive feeling when it comes to growth. Limiting, it limits you. Imagine what your life would be like if fear was not a factor. And you can't get rid of fear, but you definitely can put fear to bay by reframing, by releasing, by letting it go, by doing things, even if they don't feel like comfortable, it's okay. The second thing that might be stopping you is procrastination. It's a growth killer. What would happen if in the face of procrastination, you just took action? That's kind of like just do it, right? And it's been said that one of the greatest determining factors in success in business is simply showing up. That's just showing up to work, showing up to play, showing up even if you're feeling fear, showing up if you're feeling like procrastin if procrastination creeps in. Two types of distractions. There's the urgent and important distractions that are real. They must take priority, but they're few and far between. And the second is things we make up to avoid doing what we are afraid to do. So how do you handle distractions? What can be done to be sure they don't rob you of your beautiful future? Well, one of the things you can do is make your business a priority and then make the distractions secondary. That's one thing you can do. There's a lot of things you can do. Another thing you can do is just step up in the face of procrastination. Uh, another thing you can do is feel the fear and do it anyway, or you can reframe it. Find something exciting in something that maybe you really don't wanna do. There's lots of different ways to slice the pie, but you want to ask yourself if you're stopped by something, not letting it stop you, put it at bay and instead take action around it so that you can be productive, even though you're experiencing whatever it is you're experiencing. So, and we talked about legendary journalist, Barbara Walters. How did Barbara Walters get the movie interviews in a sea of journalists? She did one simple thing. She wrote notes and her quote was, it's never just a card. This slide has so much power so much power and uh she obviously had it figured out 
What is it that you would regret not being able to do if you could never do it again? Make a list. What are three things that you would regret not being able to do if you could never ever do it again? Number two, schedule something, schedule it, and then follow your promptings. And business building, be the one, find the one. Be the one, find the one. For every 30 people personally sponsored, 10 will do nothing, 10 will do a little, 10 will do a little more than a little, and one will do something worth talking about. So are you willing to pay that price knowing that one out of two, I'm sorry, one or two of 10 will become an affiliate? So if you present or introduce by having somebody send a card or sending them some cards or showing them the sales page or you know, sitting and asking their answering their questions or following up, one or two out of 10 will become an affiliate. So you just do the math. Two per month for a year, two per month for two years, 10 hours a week. How long will it take you to sponsor 30? How long will it take you to sponsor 60? How long will it take you to sponsor 90? What if you had three people that were rock stars? What if you had three Aprils in your downline? Imagine that. And in order to find those people, you need to do the work. And in order to do the work, you'll need to set aside your fears, blow through your procrastination, and, and literally make distractions a lower priority than your business. So that's our training for tonight. Hope you got some great value from it. And uh, let's have a great year. I'm with you 1,000%. Uh, Cody, Callie, and Dave are with you 1,000%. And uh, we got a bright future. There's going to be some big things happening earlier this early this year. And so I want you all to be part of it. So uh, God bless. And we will talk soon. Take care. Bye, everybody. Thanks.